Hello and welcome wherever you are in the world to this very interesting panel. In the times we live in, it becomes even more relevant. From time immemorial, we've had economic clusters where people exchange ideas, exchange skills, finance, and survive. In the modern day, we see it as startup clusters of Silicon Valley or Bangalore or Israel in Tel Aviv. But in olden times, and even now in India, you have clusters like the handloom and silk cluster in Varanasi or handicrafts in Orissa or carpets in Kashmir. Places where innovators, financiers, suppliers of raw materials and skills and talent of people come together with mentors to produce things and create a speciality in a particular geography. The internet made it interesting because these people could now sit in one part of the world and sell anywhere. COVID has made it almost life-threatening and existential because now they can no longer meet, they can no longer collaborate, and they can no longer talk to each other and bring out the best in each other. Talent has dispersed, supply chains have broken up, and that concept cluster is being questioned and people are struggling what to do in, this, in these times and how will it survive in the future, in the longer term. Thankfully, I don't have to answer all these questions today. I have a very accomplished and illustrious panel to help me through this. I have Alfredo Morales, who's the visiting researcher, MIT Media Lab from America. I have Rama Shankar Pandey, Managing Director of Hela India Lighting from New Delhi, India. And I have Jordi Rafals, the CEO of Innoget, Spain. And I am sitting in Jakarta. So four of us from four different parts of the world to have a discussion on this topic. I would go to Jordi first and ask him to make his opening statement, and then we will make it more interactive with questions. So we'll have two or three minutes of opening statements by each of the three panelists, and then we'll go, go into a Q&A mode. Over to you, Jordi. Yeah, hello, uh, Nilan. Thanks for your kind introduction. So it's uh, really a, an honor and a pleasure to be part of this uh, panelist today and share with you my view on uh, on clusters and, and the new situation that we are all facing because of this uh, novel pandemic. Uh, my name is uh, Jordi Ruffles, uh, acting as CEO at Innoget. Innoget is a company located in Spain, uh, providing basically uh, open innovation services aimed at fostering uh, collaboration uh, among different stakeholders active in technology, technology transfer and innovation. We've been in this space for more than 17 years so far. And one of the missions uh, that the, uh, we have as a company uh, and the vision is that innovation uh, happens when we can build uh, ecosystems and clusters, uh, either regional or focusing uh, on uh, specific uh, technology areas uh, and build uh, different processes and, and, and different um, uh, objectives in order to uh, create uh, trustful environments. And I think trust is one of the key elements for a trust for a, for a cluster to succeed. When I'm asked about uh, <clears throat> how this, uh, how are you going to get into the new normal after we were able to beat the novel pandemic that has already cost uh, lots of lives and sick and millions of people all, all around the world. I always uh, say that uh, there is no new normal to pursue, but an opportunity to create and build a new economy, uh, a more sustainable one, when, where uh, we can all uh, share wealth in a more fairly way, I would say. And that means that uh, we need to embrace uh, growth and, and collaboration and development by using uh, systems and ecosystems or building ecosystems uh, based on this cluster concept um by focusing more on stakeholder value rather than, than uh, shareholder value as uh, we have been pursuing over the last uh, last year so it's time to create impact and uh, i hope that uh, we will all together be able to build something uh, i would say more sustainable for for the human beings thank you thank you for your opening comments uh, alfredo would you like to go ahead with your opening remarks yeah, thank you very much for the introduction, Nalin. And my name is Alfredo Morales. I'm a researcher at the MIT Media Lab. 
and I'm a principal research scientist at Redstone Production Systems. And my work over the last years has been to understand by means of quantitative methods and data analysis, the complexity of social systems. And what does that mean? When you have people together and you want to understand uh, what can come out of a group of people, like in a society, a firm, you need to see how people are interacting with one another. You need to see what kind of backgrounds they have and how these sort of things mix such that you can have these sort of outcomes. When we think of innovation, you cannot force innovation, right? You can foster innovation. And that's because societies are complex. If you push them, they might behave completely different. So the work we've been trying or the work we've been advancing is to develop the algorithms, the methods, but also the science and the, the whole framework to analyze complex systems, social systems, by means of observation through data and from there extract patterns that can be inferred of how different things are happening in different places. And then we can think of sort of uh, interventions that we can do in all the places such that we can foster all these behaviors. Thank you. Rama, you want to make your opening uh, remarks? If you can unmute. Un yeah, un so, uh, if, uh, so I belong to automotive industry, which is uh, primarily driven by clusters. And uh, just like any other journal, I think uh, what we could create, uh, an example is India, that you will see why uh, Chennai cluster or let's say in West Pune cluster or Gurgaon cluster made such a huge difference to automotive here uh, was that enabler. But now going forward, what I perceive is because we have this mix working and technology is making it easier, especially with the mobile systems, um, we will need a new ways. Uh, I think cluster will still be here, cluster will stay. But uh, these technology will now enable, and I'm sure that uh, going forward, more and more tools will be given to, uh, especially uh, how the supply chain works, is you have tier one, tier two, tier three, different layers of suppliers and uh, customers coming together. And no more it is driven only by the OEMs. Uh, uh, so I say the clusters will disperse now. This is what my feeling is, that it will not only be at three places, because it was all driven by OEMs. But going forward, the innovation will happen also in tier two, tier three, uh, but they'll be connected. So with the connectivity coming in, I foresee that we are here to see uh, um, uh, pseudo clusters around the country and also it will apply to the world as well. Thank you. We have an interesting mix, right? Uh, so Rama brings in a pure industry view. You may say traditional industry view, but an industry view, living his life in the automotive cluster. Alfredo brings in an academic view, a research view on behavioral sciences, and Jordi brings in a completely digital view to innovation. So I'm going to go to Alfredo first. When you are a behavioral scientist, social behavioral scientist, uh, and you do a lot of research in that area, how is the pandemic changing this? What do you think will be permanent changes and what do you think will be transitory? If we take a two to three year view. So, the most obvious answer is that the pandemic is keeping us right from interacting the way we were um, doing it before. And interactions and particularly, let's say, the spontaneous interactions that are not planned, you know, it's really where magic can happen. And, and, those sort, and that's a huge part of, of the encounters, let's say, and, and the variants that it's not available anymore and that online you know, can do its work, but uh, not enough. So one of the major things that, that, that or the, the major disruptions that we were having, um, specifically in terms of creative work, where you have this serendipity, you know, it's, it's been uh, like it's, it's not there anymore. So that's one of the things that right now are largely disrupted and, and that uh, um, innovation depends upon a lot. Now, on the other side, innovation also requires deep work. It's not all about interacting and matching, connecting dots with new ideas. So the pandemic is bringing the opportunity for that part of the work that requires deep concentration and, and less, um, let's say, interruption. Uh, well, despite who you work with, because some people are drawing meetings here and there and even more meetings with the Zoom, and, and that can be even worse. So looking forward into the future, I think 
Uh, there's a very good work, a, a good book called Deep Work, and he defines the perfect workspace as a place that you can have both as you go in a space for meetings and, and like just like, you know, having lunch and blah, 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 people to gather and socialize such that they can expose what they're doing. And the more you types of people, the more variety, the more mixing and the more diversity, think of it as a combinatoric um, combination. It explodes. Like if you bring three new profiles, it doesn't mean that you're going to improve by 3%. It means like you can, you can create a thousand new combinations according to all of the things that you may find. But in this ideal workspace, you would also be able to go deeper into places in which you can uh, isolate yourself from distractions and get some good deep work hours such that you can develop your ideas and, and your products even further. Interesting. So, uh, Jordi, you run a very successful com digital community to connect industry, innovators, academicians, uh, entrepreneurs, etc. Alfredo makes a good point that a lot of the magic happens in informal setting, plus you need deep thinking. And research shows that most innovation often comes not from the people in that industry, but people on the fringe. Uh, the light bulb with, with the candle makers making candles for millions of years is, a, is an example. How is it working digitally? How do you recreate this magic digitally? Or how does it actually function? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the question. Very, very relevant one. And I was hearing to Alfredo and uh, I'm really curious uh, to keep this conversation ongoing, not only today, but uh, after the session, because, you know, the behavioral part of innovation is key element, right? Either on the digital space or in the real one. Um, coming back to your question, uh, it's true that um, uh, when you... Uh, challenge yourself in moving uh, a process which takes place uh, um, in the real world into the digital, it always uh, um, uh, has different components that you need to uh, overcome somehow. And one of those uh, is related to what I mentioned at the beginning of uh, my introduction about building trust among different stakeholders, right? So trust for us is uh, a key element when it comes to establish uh, a connection, right? We are in the digital space providing uh, the possibility for people to build communities uh, in some uh, areas of interest, in some areas of knowledge, or in some areas of, um, uh, or, or some, some specific industries. In today's economy, you know, uh, the new knowledge is being created as, as much more faster than in the past, right? So it took us uh, more than 50 years to create new knowledge, uh, five, 100 years ago, and today we can embrace uh, breakthrough technologies uh, in 12 months, right? And it's about this combination of, uh, of uh, knowledge, expertise, and mindsets that allows people to create new business models, right? So there's this component of, uh, of uh, connectivity uh, that when it comes to the digital, it really... Uh, gives you a competitive advantage if you can uh, really implement or invade this type of processes into your innovation management system, right? And we've seen that in many industries, even in many sectors, right? Uh, also in the, in the automotive, which is run under this clustering uh, uh, um, type of um, ecosystem or, or network, right? And, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, um, if we take this, uh, 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 if I analyze from our uh, own experience, we started the company 17 years ago, right? This could provide a, a matchmaking system between technology seekers and technology providers into a, a social network for this purpose, like LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter. And now we are heading into a kind of an hybrid system. I think it could it will make it sustainable. Um, it will allow the community to interact uh, much more fluently with uh, people from different uh, perspectives or different views. And this hybrid system, it needs to be leveraged by what Alfredo mentioned in part, 
um, artificial intelligence, machine learning technologies, natural language processing. So having access to this data and combining digitally uh, the profiles and, and uh, uh, the activities on the digital part of uh, members within our community with this creation of data that we can either extract from our own databases or uh, open databases that already exist. So, I mean, the challenge for us uh, and trying to, to stay uh, one step ahead of what is available today is this combination of uh, social networking with data science, I would say. So, in, in your experience on the platform, do do people engage in various ways or do you have to spark the engagement? I mean, do they search and engage on their own or do you have to spark some kind of topic-based engagements or how does it work? Well, there's uh, two sides of the process, basically, uh, on the type of platforms that we run. Uh, the uh, market pool side, right? So maybe... Uh, driven by uh, industry needs or market needs. Mm -hmm. And this uh, sense, uh, yeah, you know, big corporates use different means in order to achieve or getting access to this new uh, knowledge, either um, connecting with the startup communities or searching on databases. And in this part of the process, um, the success uh, increases when corporates, uh, companies, the industry basically is able to really be focused. And uh, focus is uh, a key element for creativity to, to happen uh, or to, to convert creativity into innovation. I always say that uh, in innovation is when creativity meets reality, right? And then uh, when it comes to the demand side, it's very important to build a, a, a roadmap, a, rest, a, a consistent roadmap. And uh, there is uh, the key element when uh, you want to find either a partner or a solution or a technology, that's very important, the way you ask the question. It's not about just finding one solution, but one solution linked to a partner, to a purpose, and, uh, and that, that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, very, very important. And there is where it's not only a, a for us to provide access to the community, but also to help these corporates on transform technology roadmaps into technology scouting projects. That's a very, very important. Helping them to set up the problem statement and to uh, motivate a community to respond and engage with them, right? And how to manage intellectual property, confidentiality, and privacy issues. When it comes uh, from the other side, it's, uh, yeah, it's another story, right? Um, it's uh, like uh, having, in many cases, a very nice technology or idea or even project that uh, is trying to f find a fit into the market, right? An application to solve uh, maybe an existing problem or not in a proper way. And then they need to really build on a business case and uh, explain about the potential and do market research on the on the possibilities to really uh, bring this idea or this technology into the market. And this is a more, I would say, challenging uh, part for this uh, technology uh, side of the, of the process, right? And in this case, um, that is where I, I think uh, um, data science will play a, a big role on, okay. on helping to translate science into something which can be understandable, right? So if you look at uh, patent databases, it's really uh, almost impossible to really understand what is the technology behind a patent because it's even written in a way that the uh, patent owner is willing uh, uh, not to really disclose what the technology is about. So in, in, one, in, one, in one way or another, it's always about uh, being focused, but uh, from different perspectives. It's interesting. There are a couple of uh, interesting things you said there. One is innovation is... is happens when creativity and reality meet and the pandemic is definitely sparking uh, innovation in the in a particular direction because of that yeah. because of that reality and second you mentioned patents uh, i always find uh, ironical that people give so much value to patents yet some of the largest companies in the world with the best paid lawyers apple and samsung are suing each other over their patents i don't know who went wrong or what they filed Anyway, that's a different topic. Coming to you, Rama, uh, how is how is the 
the whole cluster thing working in the pandemic times in your industry because you are right in the heart of the automotive industry world right so i guess um, i will agree with uh, both of them that uh, pandemic has moved the digital you know adoption very very fast probably you know 10 years it has advanced all of us uh, if you would have asked two years back to any within our industry or for that matter any manufacturing industry uh, we had plans and we were thinking about you know these technology will disrupt us with data science with analytics uh, and how do the workspace will change but uh, we are forced to change right that was the first starting point uh, but at the same time it has uh, the adoption of this technology is very very easy now so this one positive thing has come that uh, all the stakeholders it is now not so strange to work on a digital platform and uh, come together to create innovation and co-create uh, some of the new products but at the same time you know we are catering every manufacturing industry is catering to the physical need of the society right so the physical need uh, uh, to to understand and to you know to give a direction to it you still need people to come together and um, uh, and this is what we are missing we are definitely missing it's a kind of a hold you know that as soon we have situation better and i think then we will have probably the best of both world and uh, when you have the the support from the machines you know i think the singularity will have the most uh, profound impact uh, and so faster due to covid that the mis- let machine work what machine can do the best so i will see the deeper research the uh, the scenario analysis those patterns i think those let machine work but the agenda setting the human skills will only come from humans from us for, for uh, and that is why the the clusters were the surprise element the eureka element you know uh, those stuff uh, will need us to come together so what i see at least in automotive industry uh, one good thing will happen is that our cluster will not be limited now to uh, delhi or metros uh, there can be a democratization of manufacturing where tier 2 tier 3 and some of the innovation will be distributed across the which is a need of the other because uh, for employment for equal opportunity across the country you need that to happen today it was a compulsion that you need to come for a meeting to the cluster area that was like a compulsion you can still come for a meeting but you don't have to shift your uh, setup to this cluster you can still have setups across the country or in the in the hinterland and you can still work on digital platform so this is the two major aspect what i see the adoption of technology especially to the bigger oems because in past uh, they would have only worked when you are there very close to them but now everybody understood i think we are running you know 90% and the productivity is rather improved <laughs> i will say the the work life balance has become better employees are pretty happy and uh, distance doesn't matter traveling has come to an end you know at this point of time so i think there will be a, some kind of a balance that uh, we will need traveling we will need to come together but only for the highest uh, level of uh, you know thinking and ideating yeah. i agree with you on the quality of life the only segment that won't agree with that is students they are yearning to get back to class and i am in the edutech sector i know they suffer through a lot of issues because of this online system so alfredo i will allow you to comment on what you've heard so far and uh, i'll just add a question to that learning or innovation etc at the end of the day you can learn in various ways you can read you can watch etc but true learning happens when you actually do stuff yourself mm-hmm. when you actually experiment with stuff yourself go wrong a mentor guides you then you go ahead how how do you do that in this world over to you right so you're right about a uh, for learning you have the material and what need is you know to go through them and nowadays the material is abundant not only in terms of physical and books but also with internet and like all the online communities and the way the online communities have also strengthened because of the pandemics and 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 how there is a lot of people doing a lot of good uh, innovative work right now Um, and 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 seeking for these connections using a video platforms but there's something important there uh, uh, connecting your questions and the things that i found the most important from what i heard from the other panelists and 
the problem with research, I'm going to talk about research, and sometimes when people try to create these hopes of innovation, um, they see what happens, you know, in Silicon Valley, they see what happens in Boston, they, they, they try to name it, right? So they try to put the money, put the blah, 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 and, you know, they say, like, oh, you know, they have these cool cafeterias, so we have these cool colorful cafeterias, and we mimic what we see, right? But why doesn't it work the same way? And, and the question really is something that Bob said, and it's about purpose and direction. So research, I can give you money to do research, and you're going to go through a lot and learn a lot and probably extract a lot of insight and information. But if there is no real purpose behind what you're doing, and by this, I mean, if there is not a problem that you really want to solve, you know what I mean? All that money is going to go away. So a lot of papers and a lot of everything, but at the end of the day, that will not translate into a real innovation. And why does it happen in other places? It's because of the personal choice of the people that went to those other places. If I really want to do innovation, if I really want to solve the next software, I'm going to do the best to go to the place where all those guys are because I'm purpose-driven. And I go there and I learn from the best, you know what I mean? And I go through and I break the ice. Whereas if I'm in the comfort of my uh, zone and they're just giving me more money to do more of the same, hoping that, and every time that I hear hoping that, I think that's not going to work because there's no purpose from the beginning, you know, um, that is a major issue that uh, I think um, is a missing piece between learning and researching and actually translating that into innovative technologies. It's interesting you say that. I'm going to stay with you and ask you uh, a question. Uh, with many sectors, we have seen that moment you open up, mm -hmm. people go back to the old behavior. There's revenge tourism, there's revenge whatever, so many things happening. All the malls get full, tourist spots get crowded. When it comes to these clusters, is there a danger, especially in the older industry clusters that people will quickly go back to their old way of doing stuff and this uh, online stuff won't last? Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> you know, like... Uh, it's all about like the, the mental perception, you, you know, like a, I don't think you need a COVID. I mean, if, COVID, if you didn't change with COVID, you know what I mean? It's very hard that you're going to change without it. But um, what really is going to make a difference is whether people, um, you know, embrace their purpose, embrace their, crea their creative power and, and decide to enact it. Then the tools, then the, the online, the offline, the blah, 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 they all become tools to your purpose and your creative uh, process, you see? So it's something that really begins in each person. But it's very hard to show someone, you know? Um, it's something you have to experience if you are trapped, uh, just reacting to what people are telling you to do or what the circumstances or the situations are limiting or not limiting. And it's completely different when you really have ignited your creative process, whatever that is, you know, and then like the circumstances actually become your friends, you know, if they're not, you just change it. So there's a very good book called The Path of Least Resistance by Robert Fritz, and I really recommend it. Uh, it talks precisely about these two characteristics and how one leads to growth and another one leads to, you know, like some improvement and then going back to things as they were because they really never made the choice to do things differently. Fantastic, that's great insight and a good recommendation on the book. Uh, Jordi, you are the one who plays most with data. So I'm going to ask you a question, which I will also ask the other two panelists to answer the same question. Now in classrooms, especially in uh, middle income and lower income group, group countries, we have seen the pandemic create a digital divide. From the data that you see of the thousands of people on your platform, do you see a divide of certain industries adopting your platform more, certain age groups adopting your platform more, or is there any demographic data that shows you that there's higher adoption or higher use in certain areas? Well, that's a good question. And uh, I mean, uh, the situation has changed a lot during the last years in the sense that uh, it's not about uh, an industry or a sector or a type of a stakeholder, but about embracing uh, 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 collaboration. And uh, uh, I would say 
what we really understand open innovation uh, as a concept, as a definition mean, which is trying to extract the maximum value out of the intellectual property that you can generate internally, either by uh, licensing out technologies or finding partners to really uh, put this technology in a, in a more efficient way into the market or by incorporating uh, expertise and getting in contact with uh, new experts in new fields that get, get helps uh, you manage your innovation uh, uh, or product portfolio much more efficiently. So it's not about the sector, it's uh, really about uh, the culture and this idea of embracing change and acting outside the, this uh, comfort zone that Alfredo was mentioning. And again, it's about uh, purpose and uh, once you set up this purpose and this mission or vision or you embrace a collaboration under this uh, umbrella of building ecosystems, either digitally or um, in the real world, uh, anything uh, that has uh, to do with uh, uh, using a platform such as ours or others uh, uh, that are available uh, in different regions, in different sectors, uh, it's, uh, it's about using a tool at the end, uh, right? So this uh, open innovation uh, concept or philosophy or uh, strategy has two major components. It's the internal part, right? We call it the internal open innovation process where you need to deal with uh, business units, with objectives, uh, with uh, creating impact at the end, which is what every uh, organization is willing to, to have to create impact. And uh, the 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 outside part, right? So, how do you connect these two uh, these two uh, 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 environments, right? That's that's <clears throat> that's one thing. Uh, other than that, uh, it's true that uh, more and more industries are embracing and are connecting to Innoget uh, to our platform because of uh, this new wave of technology and innovation need comes from basically two major areas which are very transversal. One is sustainability and the other one mm -hmm. is digitalization or digital transformation. So these two areas uh, are really having an impact in each and every sector, each and every company. So uh, based on a past experience uh, by using this type of uh, processes based on uh, a collaboration, co-development, uh, different routes that uh, or different uh, programs that uh, companies and organizations can put in place in order to foster this creativity and bring this creativity into innovation, as we said at the beginning. Uh, I would say uh, sustainability and, uh, and digital transformation are uh, drivers uh, for, for the next years to come. Okay. R Rama, your industry, you know, the, a lot of the innovation, not just in your industry, it comes from the bottom of the pyramid factory shop floor worker. Because they are actually doing stuff and they give you ideas. Now, with the digital move that you're having, forced, albeit, uh, you ca I don't really expect all of them to have laptops and get onto a Zoom call and uh, try to collaborate and innovate. So how is, it, how, how is it working? How will it work? Uh, just on the contrary, uh, the workers are actually on Zoom. <laughs> Fantastic. They, they all are on WhatsApp and Zoom and it's uh, amazing how they started and how mm -hmm. they have matured, you know, in the first month after uh, first wave of COVID, uh, you can see them um, the not so appropriately, you know, coming on Zoom or whatever. But now they are quite smart. And uh, so they will adopt, they will adopt. But, you know, at the end of the day, society needs physical experiences. Digital is just a tool. It's just a method. Now we have to give that kind of um, uh, priority to both topics. We can't say digital is going to replace the, the physical uh, realization of ideas because a soft floor worker, when he's working there, why did he get that, that idea? Because he had that insight. Of course, we can have a lot of insights coming from a data analytic uh, engine uh, or the AI can do that. But the agenda setting, who will set the agenda? Because the need is felt by humans. So the society has a need which has to be then converted to something which a machine will understand. Otherwise, we will get into this uh, next vicious cycle that we keep producing the same thing, uh, you know, in a different bottle, the same wine is going to get uh, recycled. Yeah. Because we need this randomization of our life because we love uh, adventure. We love this random outcome of life. 
uh, those positive surprises and that can only happen especially if you ask my industry yes on the floor a lot of ideas come which later we say why did not uh, come earlier you know i'll tell you one very good example uh, we have these um, uh, trucks in india you will see on roads we have a lot of crashes in india this is a very big problem uh, road road deaths in india is very high it's contributing like highest in the world and you will see these trucks does not have simple thing like tail lights now uh, the driver who is driving the truck does not care for it much because it is not for his safety it is for others so you can see the human bias towards his own safety and the headlamps are changing headlamps have a lot of new technology but the tail lights did not and no innovation has happened since last 25 30 years uh, in that in that segment but if someone is really on the highway i i know the pain if you have driven on indian highway you know the pain you will have the intensity to come up with an idea so that intensity that you know necessity is the mother of all invention that necessity is human and i must say that uh, uh, they will use digital technology not a problem at least in india there is a big divide but believe me there is a big divide especially in the school education we have seen uh, not that fast uh, metro metros could adopt very fast uh you know i will say the middle income middle class adopted very fast you have laptops at home but imagine kids at uh, villages and the hinterland had huge difficulty True. so but but over time they will pick up over time there will be some open innovation there will be some you know government's uh, funding to that that so the tool will reach every uh, uh, mass but at the end of the day the innovation can only happen through physical uh, method sure good points there uh, you know when you say agenda based and you uh, alfredo say purpose uh, with a purpose essentially we are looking at outcome based uh, interactions right They're not just uh, the casual ones just some research for the sake of research is important you can't deny that but there is an outcome based thing to it so uh, coming to alfredo same question do you see a divide demographically in adoption and going forward and your closing remarks as well and then i'll go for the closing remarks to the other two yeah no yeah i mean it, it some research it really depends on the field right like if you are researching on cold atoms for instance and and, and theoretical physics yes that can be helpful in hundreds of years from now you need to do the work and i meant research directed for innovation you know because it's very common to make the mistake to think that you can top down the creation of innovation where innovation is an emergent process so it really is a, you, you 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 really need to think differently it's it's not something you can direct from from a, the ministry and looking forward i'd say that um what said that the most important thing for for um for countries and and for for innovators that are out there really is to keep on on wanting to create and and keep on like their technology and just like be willing to iterate and to and, and and understand the stages of the creative process and how it is really an evolutionary process what you think at the beginning you wanted to do it might not be the thing that you have to do you know what i mean and you have to be open to change and you have to be open to all of these things and definitely i see the the right now it's a great opportunity because there is the need for innovation because we are facing a uh, situations are completely disrupted from a uh, how it were, they were uh, a year and a half ago so i think we are in really good times right now to be honest and it just requires more work but you know everything that's everything in life that's how it is true 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 that joy coming back to you for your closing remarks what what i want you to focus a little bit on do you think you know we are replacing these physical clusters which virtual digital clusters not at all so uh, i i think it's uh, it's going to be a, it's still uh, transforming in a kind of a hybrid system right combining the digital with the real at the end of the day we cannot um, uh, yeah forget about uh, the power of the digital in terms of providing uh, co- connectivity so we all know that uh, because of the pandemic we have been able to have access to much more people than in the in the past right uh, so it's much more uh, easy to really have a conversation with people that you think that uh, you can explore ways to cooperate and and build something together and create impact at the end 
So uh, everything should start, uh, uh, as we said, uh, I, I think we all agree on, on the purpose and, 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 and the focus, right? Uh, I, uh, having said that, um, and just as a closing remarks from my side, um, I think we need to differentiate. I was uh, hearing to a keynote speaker uh, in, uh, in the social media recently, in the digital platform, by uh, just trying to leverage or really define and understand the difference between failure and failing, right? So it looks like uh, in research, we have been celebrating failure, whereas I think we should not, we should learn from failure, but uh, we should celebrate failing. And uh, we can do that if we are really focused on, on pursuing a mission, right? Or a vision. Uh, and that is uh, uh, very important. I think one of the challenges that we uh, uh, will be uh, uh, facing in the in the next years, when it comes to uh, connectivity and, and, and building a community, is the uh, stages that comes after we build the community itself. So the scaling phase and piloting phase, we need to better pilot and scale. And uh, there, uh, digital technologies might be of help. And I think innovation is uh, is uh, responsibility. Uh, it's not something that we cannot uh, forget about. Uh, each of us needs to be responsible about uh, being uh, innovators in our in our uh, in our areas. And uh, this is very important. Just uh, for closing uh, today, and hopefully we will have the opportunity to keep the conversation ongoing uh, all together. Uh, I would like to quote an African proverb that says that uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you go if you go, if you want to go uh, far, go together. And I think that building uh, around ecosystems and embracing the concept of open innovation and collaboration, we can go fast and and and, uh, and far uh, together. Uh, and uh, well yeah, said. that's 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 my vision. Thank you. Thank well you said. Both. Well said. Rama, you have just under two minutes to give yeah, us. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, the conclusion you know, from my side will be: I think it will be really bad if we lose the uh, the opportunity out of the crisis. Uh, crisis has given us the opportunity to um, have large population understanding the power of technology and uh, how we can put whether it is political priority, leadership priority uh, to the purpose and connect this to technology. I think this is what the, the next uh, wave of leaders should do that uh, use every social problem, use every issue what is, you know, is giving us trouble, connect it to technology because now the adoption will be faster. People have seen how adoption can be fast and by choice, not by compulsion. Because uh, what COVID has given technology in our hand is not by choice. But going forward, how the leadership and political priority will make it as a choice. I think then we have the um, opportunity well encast out of this crisis. Well said, well said. Gentlemen, thank you very, very much. I think you all were uh, very insightful. Your comments are very forthright and uh, it must have... It will help a lot of people understand this uh, much better. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Talk to you again soon. Likewise, Thanks. Mayling, and thank for the great thanks for the great moderation, Mayling. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.